What happens when you take cartoons and sketch comedy and smash it together? Kablam! Yes, that's exactly right. In the mid-90s, Nickelodeon would introduce this fun concept in the form of a TV show, Kablam! Set up as a comic book with Henry and June here as your vessel in and out of these individual shows we would jump in between, compartmentalizing these bite-sized bits of entertainment that, for me in any case, haven't left my brain since. So let's kick it back and take a look at what Kablam! was all about and why this weird show was such a fun time. Drenched in ska music, Kablam! started its run in 1996, lasting four seasons until it turned its final page in 2000. The show, like I mentioned, was hosted by two cartoon characters, Henry and Jude, who aside from introducing each segment, became their own cartoon in a sense. As every break between the segments, their shenanigans would get more and more interesting from it just starting as back and forth banter. They were very crude, almost sketch-like characters, which truly represents what this show just is. There were many segments featured within the show, some that that would be staples of the show in general, and some that had either short runs, be blocked from having reruns due to copyright, or even another network picking up one of the shorts to become its own full TV show. I swear, this show felt like a charcuterie board of ideas sometimes. It always reminds me of those manga sampler volumes when you got chapter snippets of various out or upcoming manga to give a shot to. No one's gonna get that reference. Why do I do this to myself? Why am I talking to myself right now? There is no one here. I am alone. Sniz and Fondue is one of the show's main staples, having regular segments in the show, ending its run about the third season in. This show focuses on a bunch of ferret roommates, with Sniz and Fondue being the main two causing or dealing with the conflicts. And the other two roommates are just usually there and go along with whatever the ride is that they have to unfortunately be a part of. This was the most regular cartoon in terms of what was ever shown on this show, honestly feeling like it could have been its own regular Nicktoon. Then there was Action League Now, how could you forget this one. Lasting throughout all of the seasons, this was a playground of weird mashup toys done in part stop motion, part hand off the screen holding the action figure style called Chuckamation, which is a mix between of what I just said and then also chucking the toys to do something. It follows the Action League, a crime fighting group that consists of the flesh, basically a naked He-Man, Thunder Girl, it's just Wonder Woman with a Bratz doll head, Stinky Diver, the, the name explains itself. And Melt Man. He melts. There's also the Chief, who is used as the slapstick... Well, to be fair, they're all used for slapstick comedy relief. But they go out of the way to make sure he gets hurt in some shape or form even more. Most of their issues pertain to the dishonorable mayor causing or doing something that causes the conflict of the week. I love the creativity in this show specifically. It feels more like playing with action figures more so than Robot Chicken does anymore. So the use of real-world locations like a pool, being inside of a house, a garage, a mailbox, Box, all of that gave size perspective and feelings of your imagination as a kid playing with action figures or dolls and sometimes the jokes would get uh out of hand oh no no Tw twitter is warning me about this not the jar now the path is clear for my no no plan. no no and now back to kablam on nickelodeon Next, there was Life with Loopy, another show that lasted throughout the series that centered around a boy named Larry who shares his experiences dealing with his sister's crazy adventures that caused some sort of mayhem within their household. If you couldn't guess, Loopy is the sister. Animated with stop motion and puppet bodies, this is another segment that sticks out so much in a great way. The stories are short and sweet, and the mixing of the animation and puppets to real humans always gives me a solid laugh. Mainly more so when it's a close cut of their hands doing something and it's just a real hand instead of a puppet hand anymore. I don't know why, but it, it just gets me every time, I swear. Now, in a weird way, this show kind of reminds me of Angela Anaconda. And speaking of which, did you know that this is where Angela Anaconda started? We have spoken about the creator of Angela Anaconda's works before and have mentioned the Digimon movie, oddly enough, being the main thing that keeps Angela Anaconda in your memory. But yeah, the show had two shorts play in Kablam! And the show was eventually picked up by Fox, who wouldn't allow those episodes to replay anymore through reruns. Lava was another short on Kablam! with issues of inappropriate content that was cut 
out or edited down when being played during Kablam. With copyright issues beyond the initial airings, the episodes that featured these shorts edited them out. Originally, Lava's title in France was Guano. No, not that Guano. There was the one-off Anemia and Iodine, created by Robert Skull of Rocco's Modern Life fame, following the stories of a goth girl cat and her skater best friend. While it was short, it was cool to see that Rocco look all over it. My personal favorite, though, of all the shorts was Prometheus and Bob, a stop-motion, claymated, simple series of a purple alien recording himself trying to teach a caveman named Bob how to do a myriad of things and activities, usually to the slapstick effect of everything going wrong and Prometheus getting hurt or his belongings destroyed, as well as the monkey that hangs out and usually gets in his own conflicts with the two and the items and technology around. It's simple, it's basically silent outside of the grunts and frustration noises. <laughs> Oh yeah, and monkey noises. And we haven't gotten this type of energy until the classic short series Purple and Brown, which, which wait a second. Ah, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, these weren't the only shorts. These were just the most interesting, at least in my opinion, and the most prominently featured over the show's run. They were weird, different, and weren't afraid to get creative with the animation medium. A few of the shows could have translated well into full-fledged Nicktoons like Sniz and Fondue, but others like Action League Now and Life with Loopy work really good in small doses when we get them. To take the sketch comedy setup and mix it up by making it all cartoon and animation based is and was was an interesting concept. In execution, I'd say it did its job well. It's memorable. I enjoyed watching it now as much as I did growing up. Sadly, the only real issues for me are noticed as the seasons went on, with what shorts would or would not be chosen for the episodes. I do believe in the rotation of shorts after season one, specifically bringing in fresh new ideas. The only problem was that it would always rely on those mainstay show names to keep you watching and most every other show was a one-time short, which is fine as well. Well, if that's all that was planned for it, totally understandable. I think just back then it was harder to understand outside of the main shorts, what are these other shorts? So I don't know if that's a me being young and not understanding at the time thing, or the show having a lack of faith in trying new things, which, let's be honest, isn't far from Nick's wheelhouse anymore. Funny enough, the show was planning on multiple spin-off projects. First, there was a live-action Prometheus and Bob film that was announced in 1998. It was rumored that Chris Farley and David Spade would be cast in the movie. Due to lack of interest, the film project was ultimately scrapped. Wait, 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 wait. You had those two actors in mind for the roles and you say lack of interest? I can't believe we were all robbed of seeing that. Anyway, it was to be directed by Harold Swart, who later went on to direct Agent Cody Banks, The Pink Panther 2, The Jaden Smith, Jackie Chan Karate Kid, The Mortal Instrument. Kablam is kablamming right back. Back! Kablam is Quebec! Henry and June themselves had quite an adventure. In 1999, there was a television special that aired on Nickelodeon titled The Henry and June Show. It followed the same two host characters, but this time within their own world, with guests and a studio audience and them attending school and all that. It was never shown again. Nothing more was produced, and we all pretend like we saw nothing. Henry and June, however, still made appearances during special programming blocks, creating mid-commercial break shorts of Nicktoon World News, Henry and June's Nicktoon Summer, and 101 percent whiz bang. As far as reruns of the show, after it ended in 2000, it played on the network until 2001. Yes, what a long-lasting rerun life, right? Uh, that is not correct. Well, in 2002, Nicktoons, our favorite subject to talk about recently on the channel, was born, and it happily lived there until 2005 when Nick was wiling out with cancellations and stopping reruns. They still kept some shorts as fillers for in-between commercials until they did away with those in 2000. However, in 2008, we did have the Nicktoons Network 100 Greatest Nicktoon Moments Marathon where we would see Kablam return for its final time. That is until Splat came around showcasing older properties my generation are nostalgic for, with Kablam getting some love in 2016 for its 20th anniversary. So that brings us to today. How do we watch this show? Can we watch this show? And the answer is clearly from watching this video, yes. Streaming wise, it's on Paramount Plus and I'm sure many clips and episodes are all over video sites like here on YouTube. But what about home media, like actual 
physical media. Well, I hope you have your VHS players ready and an appetite for two-decade-old pizza because Tombstone Pizza had a promotion where you could get the Kablam! episode Won't Crack or Peel on VHS, making it the only physical media the show ever had. Yum. The reason behind Kablam! ending seemed to be from the usual things we point our fingers to. Lower viewership, lower ratings, but something of note to point at as well was the lack of marketability with merchandise. This wasn't SpongeBob, Rugrats, or anything else at the time. It was a hodgepodge of ideas and weird things that the network couldn't find monetary value in. So when all was said and done, the show just kind of ended and was floating along with reruns until the final page was turned and it all went kablam. It's flammable. Kablam! really was such an interesting idea that tied up the tail end of the 90s and entered the new millennium doing something that only 90s TV could pull off. Later, this type of stuff is mainly seen for an older audience on places like Adult Swim, specifically when it comes down to different animation styles and trying new things. Kablam! was super influential to the future of show creation. Whether networks like that or not, showcasing such interesting and unique animation that weren't found in most traditional cartoons at the time helped give those styles longevity in the medium. I just wish we get to see more of it than we do. If you want to change to another channel, let me give you a hand. I'd love to know your thoughts on the show. Did you ever watch it? And if so, which short segment was your favorite overall? Thanks so much for kicking back and strolling Nostalgia Lane with me. Make sure to hit like and subscribe for more content like this. Follow me on Twitter for updates on content and more. I'll be back with another video soon, but until then, later.